are guides, we are kings. We march in faith, cause we believe we can. Change the world to what it needs. Stand against our enemies, cause we can. We are kings, demanding change, cause we believe we can. At ease, at ease, at ease. Hey, Shalom, how you doing, brother? Hey, brother. Let me talk to this brother for a second. How you doing? Let me ask you a question. Step up, boss. Let me ask you this, because I see you paying attention and you got your fridges on. So I'm going to ask you a few questions if you don't mind. What's your name, bro? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. I'm from Cherahab. How you doing, Emmanuel? That's a good name. You know what Emmanuel means? What that mean? All praises. All praises. So you know you're in Israel. What tribe you come from? Judah. Judah. All praises. So you congregate? Yeah, when I'm in. I can't hear you. I congregate when I'm in. I'm gonna show you why I asked that question. Hebrews, give me Hebrews 10, 26. Cause it's important to congregate, cause a lot of our people know they from what tribe they from, and some of them ask them actually wear fringes. But what they tend to forsake is the holy convocation. Read that. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the matter of some is. That's why I say that, because a lot of our people, since we've been teaching in the streets, not just us, many other camps, a lot of people know they're Israel now because the word been going out for some time. But the problem is they don't fully keep the laws as first. One of them is not forsaking us, and one of them they not congregate. Some of them congregate at home. Some of them congregate with family members. Why they do that? Because would a family member tell you where you're going off at? Will they correct you when you're doing wrong? Huh? It depends. It depends. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I mean. If it if it happens to depend on something, then that means it's something that they miss. Well, if you can't get around other brothers and sisters, it ain't gonna depend. If you're going off, they're gonna tell you you're going off. It ain't gonna depend on nothing. It's gonna be like either you do it or you don't. Right. That's why God said us read that again. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the man of the as the matter of some is, because some people will have favoritism with others. They might not correct you on certain matters versus somebody who don't know you and just know you from keeping the law gonna correct you on any matter you go off on. That's why it's important to be around a congregation, not family members only and congregate around them because God, because God understands something we don't understand. And sometimes, most of the time, we hate correction. We hate being corrected. We hate being told that we're doing something wrong. That's why we forsake that. Read on. But exhorting one another, uh -huh. and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Because the day approaching where God gonna burn this world down, right. and you don't want to be left off on a law that you never been corrected for on because a family member decided they, you know, that's my that's my cousin. I ain't gonna tell him that. You know what I'm saying? And you don't want to be put to death on something that you should all they had to be told. You should have been told that, let's say for example, eating pork was wrong. I'm not saying that's what you're doing, but I'm giving an example. Give me that in Sirach, I think 37 where it goes into um, be able to continue with a godly man. Because a godly man not going to sugarcoat. A godly man not going to say it depends, I'm going to tell him if he's going off or not. Right. I think it's 37, 12, 37 and 12, yeah. Because being around godly men, they're going to tell you, thus says the Lord regardless of your feelings. Read that. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 37, verse 12. You know? But be continually with a godly man. With a godly man. You know what a godly man is, Emmanuel? There you go. Read on. 
whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord, whose mind is according to thy mind, and will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. Exactly. So that's why we got to be around the Holy Comfort. How you doing, brother? What's your name, bro? Uh, bro, Tavalo. Tavalo. How you doing, sister? You got it. What's your name, sis? How you doing, sis? Bartolay, how you doing? What we doing out here? We teaching Emmanuel how he's supposed to walk in his Israelite. Because as you can see, all of us got some similar on our clothes. Different color, like his shirt. You see the bottom of his shirt? You might see that around when you walk around like Usher. You see the bottom of his brother's shirt, his garment? We got that because not a fashion statement, but for a law. Like you see it, like you said. It's different color, but it's a law. Why do you think he put that on? You think it's a, where do you think he put that on? You don't know. Well, I'm going to show you. After I show you that before, you look like you're in a rush. I'm I am. I got to go in here and I got to get my bus. Okay, I'm going to read this while before I'll you go. I'll be coming back. All right, read that while you walk off. For you, brother. This is the book of Numbers, uh -huh. chapter 15, verse 38. Go, go. Speak unto the children of Israel uh -huh. and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. See, it's bid, bid me to command. So what we got it on for is not because we, it's a fashion statement, it's because we, it's a law that God put upon the children of Israel. Right. Hold on before you continue. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribband of blue. And it shall be unto you. Right, he's going to tell you why you must do that. You got to put on fringes with a border of blue. It could be any color blue. You paying attention? Read on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, uh -huh. that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. And do them. That's the key word. So I'm going to ask you a question. That's one law we're supposed to do what? What are we supposed to do? Based on what you just heard, what he just read. Will you pay attention? I mean, keep a commandment. Keep a commandment. What a commandment we just read was what? Put on what on your shirt? Blue. What up blue with what? French. French. Not purple? I don't know the color of French. It don't matter. He got, you see, he got no, black. I, I, did, I did recognize blue because of the color, but I would listen to what you said, but I don't recognize the color. Like, the French. Okay, okay, the French can be any color, but the ribbon that's on the French, which is this. You see the ribbon? Okay, like the, uh, the uh, okay, I, I see what you're Okay, that's one law. Now I'm going to give you another law that you're breaking right now. Give me Leviticus 26 and 1. I'm going to show you a law that you're breaking. Why? How you know I was going down? Because it had to be. I got on clothes. I ain't breaking on law. And let's okay. talk about the cross. The cross is what Jesus is on the law. Okay, I'm going to show you where if that's lawful or is that not lawful. You ready for that? I believe it. Yeah, if you say unlawful, I say unlawful. Okay, I'm a, for the sake of edification, somebody else listen. I'm going to read it anyways. Yes, sir. Read it. Leviticus. Chapter 26, verse 1. Ye shall make you no idols. Uh -huh. You shall what? Make you no idols, right. nor a graven image. Uh -huh. Neither rear you up a standing image. Neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land. Get that brother hand. He just stood right. We get that brother hand. Now, you didn't have to throw the chain away, was it? Okay, all praise. Hey, that's a form of repentance. And that show you that. You showing the Lord you willing to learn. So now, my next question. Do you see yourself on this sign here? My eyes ain't that good. Okay. Oh, man, yeah, I'm a slave. A slave? No, what will? Well, look at the names. On your, on your right, it tells you African American, uh -huh. West Indian, Haitian, Puerto Rican, so on and so forth. Your left, it tells you Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Which nationality you you see yourself on? Where's um, African? Huh? African, the first one. You see what it says, African black, American black? Okay. Okay, so that be, that, that's that's what you call yourself, right? I call myself Tavalo, that's my name. No, I'm sorry, nationality, nationality. Yo, black man. Black uh, man, okay. According to God, he called you Judah. That's he right. He called you a, from the nation of Israel, yes, from the tribe of Judah. Right. Now, I'm going to prove it to you, so that way you won't say somebody on the street just told me I'm Judah, not African American. Now, you're a king. Okay, all praise. We are kings and priests. That's right. But we, before we can confess that, we got to know how to walk as a king and priest. And we why, can't walk like an African American. I, I, I'm lost. And I need, I need God. Okay, we're here for you. Deuteronomy 29 and 1. Read this. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 1. Bring it out. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel. No, the children of African-Americans. The children of Israel. So who are we talking to? The children of Israel. You 
got that, but I know you know that. Children of Israel. So now we got that squared away. Now let's see what Moses was telling to the children of Israel. The children of Israel today are you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. That's, right. That's who God called the Israelites, and we're going to prove that in the book of Deuteronomy. Now let's see what Moses, remember he said, make these words known unto the children of who? Israel. Let's see what he told Israel. 15. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments. Like we just learned two commandments. What two commandments you just learned today? Fringes, and what else? Don't, don't serve idols. Don't serve idols. Now that's that's two commandments. But remember, he said, observe all the commandments. We just gave you two so far. Read on. To observe, to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now he said, if you don't listen to my laws and statutes, he's gonna put curses on us. Is curse a good thing or a bad thing? It's like I've been cursed already. Okay, I'm praise it. I, I, I we live in the curse. I lost everything. I just I just been reduced to sitting on my phone for 10 hours this on the evening. Okay. I'm lost. I'm gonna show you. Now remember, we, what, what, what's the whole purpose of me reading this? To prove to you if what you to what? That you are what? Uh you're the child of Israel. Child of Israel. Now, before we continue on, I need you to understand that that's very important because before you can understand this Bible, you got to first see yourself in this Bible. Because if you still walk around saying I'm American black, then you still got a lot to learn. Because the people who call you that is the people that actually put chains and yokes of irons around your neck. But God never called you that. That's why we're trying to go back to our God-given nationality. Before you get to your next question, listen to this. Remember, the point is we're teaching you what's your what? Nationality. Okay, let's get that. Now we're going to prove it based on the curses. Now he said, if you don't listen to the laws, I'm going to put curses on you. You mentioned a curse that you're going through? Let's see if that's biblical. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Bring it out. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. Now you mentioned you had to sell your phone to get something to eat. Now, I'm not sure about that phone. Where do you get the phone from? Do you get it? Okay, where your mama get the phone from? Metro PCS. Who owns Metro PCS? Okay, let's read that verse again. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger for food. You got to go to your enemies. Because who owns this? This is CVS. What this is here? Pharmacy. Food pharmacy. Who owns food pharmacy? Whatever this is. Elon. Why right, there you go. Read on. In hunger. In hunger, you gotta go to your enemies. And in thirst. If you got a Zephyr Hill bottle, bottle water, they got different company names. They got spring water, Zephyr Hill, Sandy Light. They got all kind of water. Aquafina. Your people don't own these um, um bottles. But you gotta pay for water, because now remember it comes freely from the sky. But if you get caught collecting it, you might get fined. Read on. And in nakedness. And in nakedness, the clothes on your back. It might be, if you look on the, uh, the collar, it might say made in China. It might say made in Taiwan. But it don't say made from African American, so called I got Israel. A question. Hold on for your question, sister. I'm dealing with this, brother. I'm going to come to you. Read on. And in one of all things. Now, in all things, now in one of all things goes into getting a cell phone. You got to go to your enemies. Getting a birth certificate. You got to go to your enemies. Getting a social security number. You got to go to your enemies. Getting toilet paper. You have to go to your enemies. That's what one all on. That's what one all things goes into. Read on. And he shall put a yoke. Grab that sign, because I'm gonna show you a visual. I need this. Who can hold this sign up for me? And he shall what? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck uh -huh. until he have destroyed thee. You see that yoke of iron? That's how he show you that you've been destroyed. This yoke of iron right here. These yoke of iron they had all around our neck. That's right. There you go. Twelve years of slave, you got. Amistad, you got perfect of a nation. All these movies are showing us as a depiction of what our ancestors went through. And he said he shall destroy it. Read on. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flying. Now the question I got for you, brother. Who did this? Remember, we reading who Moses was talking to. Who can relate to that? Those curses that I just read to you. Yokes of iron's around their neck, 
They got to go serve their enemy for one of all and things. The black woman and the black man, that, not just the black man. There you go, the, the black, black Hispanic and Native American man and woman. My mother. You're right. Took out her place here. So, okay, now let me get the point. Now that we got that squared away, so what does that make their true nationality? Because Moses said he was talking to who? Wait a minute, who true? Our true name? Yeah, what does that make our true name? Is it African American? Remember who Moses was talking to? Who was Moses talking to when we read that verse? Uh, Israel. Israel. So now if that if Moses was talking to Israel, he wasn't talking to African Americans. And we can relate to what Moses is saying. Talking to Israelites. What that make us? Israel, okay. Giving all praise to the most high. That's, That's right. what we out here to do, brother. We out here to show our people that we are not African American, Haitians, Puerto Ricans. We are the children of Israel. We are the people of the book. We are the Jews of the Bible. You understand that, brother? So when somebody asks you your nationality, what you gonna say? Child of Israel. Children of Israel. There you go. From the tribe of what? Judah. Judah, there you go. So now you learn that. Now as a Judite from the nation of Israel. How much you carry yourself? What do you mean by that? What do I mean by that? You know what I mean? 10 and, 10 and uh, 12. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Yes, sir. Here you go. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. Read it out. And now, Israel. And now, Israel, that you just learned that you were an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. What doth the Lord thy God require of thee? You know what the word require means? What he wants you from you. Yeah, exactly. Read. But to fear the Lord. But to fear the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to walk in all his ways, uh -huh. and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, Three. to keep the commandments of the Lord. What does the Lord want from the person who just learned of Israel? To, run with Israel? to keep the commandments keep of the Lord. Like you just learned today, you ain't gotta you can't wear no idols. You gotta put on fringes. It was it, 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 it took everything in me to sell this phone, especially for ten dollars. I went from sixty dollars to ten dollars. Okay. But at the same time, I look at it like this. Everything that was in that phone was poison to me. I'm not talking about what the white man said, I'm talking about what I'm buying from the white man. What I ain't buying, what I was buying from them. Right. Nobody put a gun in my head and make me buy nothing. Nothing wrong with buying from them. There's nothing very much wrong with buying from somebody who puts chains on you. Well, listen, if you don't buy from them, how you going to have a house over your head? How you going to eat? Us get our own. Us, take, us get money and buy this. Before we got to do that, what must we first do? Come together. Okay, after we come together, come together under what umbrella? Israel. Okay, and doing what? And doing what we Israel? Us. Doing what he requested for We pride of us. Keeping of it. the commandments. Yes, sir. But right. now, first, let's let's get to that. Now, give me another commandment we got to do, because you just learned two. We got to stick. We got to learn those I, before I, we start I, doing what you want us to do. Now, I don't want, I, I would love for that to happen. Uh -huh. I pray for that to happen. But for it to happen, we got to we gotta do what? We got to keep the commandments. There you go. So let's, let's work on that before we go ahead of ourselves. Let's start keeping the commandments and learn all the commandments, the feast days, the high holy days, how you treat your brother. Don't get mad at your brother, fighting with your brother, having hatred for your brother, bearing grudges against your brother. Let's learn those laws, and when we master that, then we can go to the next step, what you talking about, is building businesses and getting our own money. Because that's right, you got the right mindset, but, but it's steps to get to that point. Yes, here you go. How do you repent if you don't got a child How do I get in? Ezekiel 14. Give me Ezekiel 14, I think 13 or 12, about repent. You got to turn back and put the miters behind you. All those worldly lusts that you used to go about doing, like, like for example, do you got a girlfriend? I got several. Yeah, read that. This is, this, is this is what we got to do. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 6. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, Remember, this is the answer to your question. What you got to do? Read. Repent. You got to do what? Repent. Read. And turn yourselves from your idols. What are idols could be? You got many girlfriends. That could be an idol to you. I don't need. I don't need them. Okay. If you, got, if you got plenty of them, what does God say about that? Hold that. Give me First Corinthians ten and <laughs> seven and two. I don't know. You know. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. First Corinthians seven and two. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 7 verse 2 uh -huh. Nevertheless to avoid fornication because having more than one is a form of fornication 
sleeping around with different women. To avoid that, hold on, read. Let every man have his own wife. Have his own wife's own wife. What does that mean? How you gonna have one? So remember, we learned in the steps to get out of the conditions and curses that we're living in so that we can gather together and start building our own businesses. But be first, we gotta do, before we gotta do that, we gotta come under that one mind, which is Christ-like, doing what he commanded us to do. Read that again from the top. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Notice the two key words on the wife and husband. It didn't say jump off, it didn't say girlfriend, it didn't say boyfriend, it said wife. It, it said husband. Hold on. Now go back to Ezekiel. Drop that, go back to Ezekiel 14 and 6. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 6. Uh -huh. Therefore say unto the house of Israel. Yes, you just learned you Israel. Thus saith the Lord God. Uh -huh. Repent. One way of you repenting, you used to watch your idol away. Another way you say you're going to start putting fringes. The third way is you got to start having many girlfriends. You got to get your wife. Read on. And turn yourselves from your idols uh -huh. and turn away your faces from all your abominations. Because having many girlfriends is an abomination in the sight of the Lord. That's, That's right. And he wants you to turn your back from that. That's what he mean by turn yourself from your idol. Because that could be an idol to you. Having a lot of girls. You understand that? Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.